While I've made various videos about shilling Moege, I think my tastes are misunderstood a bit because I personally really like the mystery visual novel genre just as much, if not possibly more. I want to help people potentially get into this genre by using this video to talk about five visual novels that I think would be good for those newer to the mystery genre of visual novels or just potentially new to visual novels in general. For the record, I'm not going to include extremely gameplay heavy titles such as the Ace Attorney series, Danganronpa series, and the Zero Escape series because quite frankly, I don't consider these visual novels and I want to give titles that are even more niche than these a chance. The first visual novel I'm going to be talking about is Root Double. Whenever I think of mystery visual novels, especially in the sci-fi genre that would be good for newcomers, this is always the first one that comes to mind. The first main thing that helps it is that it has a good variety of likable characters. And when I mean by variety, I mean there's a good balance of male and female characters, different age ranges, and even really interesting backgrounds and jobs. This can help to see if you prefer a more adult age cast or if you prefer the more typical anime high school cast because there's a bit of both here. Root Double also has the advantage of being a mystery where every single mystery is eventually properly explained. As much as I like the mystery genre in visual novels, there are so many titles where many of the answers you feel like they just come out of nowhere or are only vaguely explained to move the plot along. With Root Double, you will not have to worry about that. Every single thing that's brought up as a mystery will eventually be explained. Root Double also has the kind of common setting where various characters are trapped in an enclosed space just with a sci-fi magic twist. Since these sci-fi magic powers are explained in the early routes, they won't just be an out of nowhere deus ex machina and puts a nice spin on this kind of common setting. One potential thing to look out for in Root Double is its kind of inconsistent pacing. There are four routes in Root Double and it's heavily recommended you read them in alphabetical order. Some routes are on the faster side, especially Route A which is easily the best paced route in the game, while some parts are quite slow, including the beginning of Route B and especially the end of Route D. I also think Route Double is better than many mystery visual novels, the pacing inconsistency might be a flaw for some people. Finally, Root Double has a gimmicky and potentially obtuse choice system. It seems like something that would be fun to mess with at first, but considering that there are good and bad endings and figuring out which characters to properly allocate points to can be difficult if you want to actually get the good ending. I heavily recommend using a guide with Root Double. Overall, if you don't mind the weird choice system and kind of inconsistent pacing, I heavily recommend Root Double as a good beginner mystery visual novel due to its likable character variety and logical consistency. The next beginner friendly mystery visual novel I want to recommend is the Umineko series. Right off the bat, this series has the big advantage of being by far the most popular on this list, having some of the loudest fans I've seen in the visual novel community. So you're guaranteed to find people to talk about this series just about anywhere on the internet. The first major beginner friendly aspect of Umineko is the fact that it places a huge emphasis on the spectacle. As much as I love mystery visual novels, many of them have many scenes where they just have to explain the details of the mysteries and even tell parts of its story in dull and long-winded ways. But with Umineko, the developer always made sure the buildup led to a huge impactful scene. This includes its extremely memorable soundtrack, generally considered one of the best in visual novels. Whenever there's a murder found, you can really feel the emotion and weight behind each death. Without giving away too much, there's a lot of over the top arguing about fighting out who the culprit is, so you'll always be excited to find the next twist. The next major aspect of Umineko is that it places a huge emphasis on thematic symbolism. Every other entry on this list has its mystery eventually explained to you in a matter of fact detail, but with Umineko, there's a lot of things that are built up as early as episode 1. Many things related to personality traits, broken family, and even a theme of being obsessed with mystery in general. The next major aspect about Umineko is that there's a lot of characters, and I mean a lot. Episode 1 starts off with 18 regular humans on an island, basically being the visual novel version of Crazy Rich Asians. However, the amount of major characters more than doubles by the time you reach the final episode where the vast majority of them are very memorable and bombastic in their own way. The first potential issue of Umineko is the fact that it's a very slow burn, averaging about a 150 hour read time if you finish all 8 episodes. Between all the characters they have to introduce, all the mysteries, and a lot of the thematic stuff they have to build up, the writing can be very, very slow and detailed, and it goes overly into detail in just about every aspect in each episode of the story. Thankfully the story is at least constantly building up to something, but many times scenes can spend 
lots of times just being really repetitive or just staying too long on slice of life ish scenes. The other potential issue of Umineko is that all the mystery reveals and details will not be spoon fed and spelled out for you in the visual novel itself. This is a major issue for some readers as some people expect to have all the answers in front of them by the end. However, the visual novel seems to want you to figure out a lot of the details through some vague symbolism as explained before. If you want more overt answers, you have to go to the manga adaptation which may not be to anyone's taste. That said, if you don't mind a super long slow burn with answers that aren't spoon fed to you, Ubineko is a great mystery visual novel for beginners as it places a heavy emphasis on spectacle and thematic symbolism. The next mystery visual novel I recommend for beginners is the first Kara no Shoujo or The Shell Part 1. These are two separate Steam releases and I personally prefer The Shell version as, it, as it's an HD and is more content and a voice protagonist. The Shell is a great first mystery visual novel if you want something that's actually down to earth and gritty. The setting actually takes place in the 1950s, has no supernatural elements, has a lot of adult age major characters, and the main character is a nice change of pace, is an almost 30 year old detective that's pretty down to earth, and all the mysteries, while screwed up, are all pretty realistic. Compared to all the other entries on this list, The Shell is the best if you do not want any fantasy anime tropes at all. To complement The Shell, it also has by far the best pacing of all the entries in this video. Since the visual novel in general is pretty gritty and down to earth, the way the characters interact and solve the mysteries are at a good pace. Not too fast, not too slow. To complement the previous two points, there are some very gruesome deaths. While some of the other entries in this video are also murder mysteries, the shell gets by far the most detailed in how gruesome the deaths are, especially since you get to see and purposely investigate the dead bodies, but you also get to get into the mindset of, the, of a killer as they are about to kill their target so it gives this strong, gritty, psychological horror feel. An interesting thing about The Shell is that it has a minor amount of gameplay. I know at the beginning of the video, I purposely excluded things like the Ace Attorney series. The Shell is an extremely stripped down version of Phoenix Wright, down to having not nearly as much gameplay. You have to travel to places, you have to do very short investigations of dead bodies and locations, and there are very short deduction segments that help the main character figure out what to investigate next. These parts can be a pain in the butt to find the right ending without a guide, but if you need a little gameplay to get more immersed in the story and don't mind using a guide, the gameplay in The Shell should not matter to you. The final concern about The Shell are the randomly placed H scenes, especially with high school girls. As I mentioned earlier, the main character Reiji is an almost 30 year old detective. Despite the fact that he's a widow, he apparently has no issues having sex with various women he meets up with, many of which are at the beginning of bad endings. Many of these scenes are just so out of place and random, and this is coming from a guy who actually likes H scenes. That said, if the last two points didn't bother you, I think The Shell or Karno Shoujo is a great first beginner mystery visual novel if you want a mystery that's relatively fast paced, realistic, gritty, and even kind of depressing. The next beginner friendly mystery visual novel I want to recommend is Chaos Child. This is one of the visual novels in the pretty popular science adventure series, and contrary to popular belief, almost all of them are standalone titles without needing to experience previous ones. The main thing that helps is that it does a good balance of combining slice of life and the mystery thriller aspects. As much as I like the mystery genre, many times mystery stories are inconsistent in terms of combining character growth through slice of life as well as developing the mystery. Even in this video alone, some entries lean a lot more towards just pure mystery at the expense of slice of life character development, or the other way around with too much slice of life before the actual mystery stuff happens. I think Chaos Child does the best at having a balance of having little bits of slice of life character growth before hitting you with mystery reveals as they go on. The next major aspect Chaos Child has over the other entries is the fact that it's the only typical urban fantasy high school setting on this list. While the other entries either have a lot of adult age characters or just have unique grounded settings, Chaos Child is the one entry where the vast majority of the characters are high school age and you still have to go through a bunch of the typical high school slice of life stuff you see in anime visual novels. Chaos Child is great for starting you off with a more typical high school setting that just mixes in urban sci-fi fantasy stuff fairly early on. An interesting thing about Chaos Child's story structure is that the vast majority of its content is in the common route. It's safe to say somewhere between 60 to 70% of the whole story is in the common route because it has 11 relatively long chapters, is somewhere between 20 to 30 hours on its own 
as a whole and has a clear conclusive ending. Chaos Child still does have other routes for the heroines, but they're quite short and usually just used to talk about other aspects or plot twists about the other main heroines. Like many story-heavy visual novels, there is a true route that is much longer than the other main heroine routes, and you need to finish the other heroine routes before unlocking the true one. One of Chaos Child's most unique features is its choice system, the Delusion Triggers. This is quite frankly one of the weirdest choice systems I've seen where the main character, Takaru, can choose to have positive or negative delusions in very specific situations. You have to pick a certain amount of them in order to get certain routes and endings. Sadly, the vast majority of these delusions are just goofy fan service scenes, which might be okay for some people, but can be a distracting, annoying waste of time for others. Thankfully, this delusion aspect plays a more serious part later in the plot, but the choice system could be annoyance for some people. The final potential issue with Chaos Child is honestly having the potential to deal with angry online science adventure fanboys. First of all, there's a fan translation group called the Committee of Zero who are committed to making improvement patches for all of the science adventure visual novels. This group claims that the official translations are all flawed both in terms of translation as well as quality of life features. Science adventure fans may chide you if you admit you read Chaos Child without the Committee of Zero patch, meaning you didn't get the real experience. Similarly, if you choose to read Chaos Child before any other science adventure visual novel, there will be a decent amount of hardcore fans who will criticize you for doing this. Don't listen to them. Or more specifically, I would personally say if you do actually plan on reading every single science adventure visual novel in the series, then yeah, start from Chaos Head Noah and work your way up up until Anonymous Code so you can get all the little references they make in each game. However, if you just want a standalone urban fantasy mystery story, or are unsure if you would enjoy the science adventure series, I actually think Chaos Child is one of the best starting places for many reasons. If you don't mind a potential obnoxious fan base or an odd route structure, I think Chaos Child is a great beginner visual novel for mystery fans if you just want a well-balanced urban fantasy and sci-fi high school setting mixed with a mystery thriller. The final beginner-friendly mystery visual novel I want to recommend is Ever 17. This is the first mystery visual novel I personally read and do have a personal bias towards it, but I'll try to be as fair as possible when recommending it to other beginners. The first major thing I'd say about Ever 17 is its emotional highs. There's some incredible emotional moments to the point that Ever 17 low-key feels like a Nakige or a visual novel aiming to make you cry. This aspect can help if you feel like just going to a visual novel mostly for the mystery may not be enough. The next major thing about Ever 17 I'd say is after all these years, it still has one of the most mind-blowing plot twists I've ever seen. Now this could be biased because both Uchikoshi and Nakazawa have created similar twists in things like Zero Escape and the Root Double series, mystery stories that they ended up writing later. But I still really liked the execution of the twists in Ever 17, and you could definitely tell they really set the standard for other visual novels by those two writers going forward. The third major aspect is I believe Ever 17 is one of the few visual novels that actually properly takes advantage of the visual novel medium. As much as I like the visual novel medium, I think many of their stories could work just as well, if not better, in formats like anime if the animators actually took the time to have the right amount of episodes and knew how to pace things correctly. However, without giving away spoilers, Ever 17 is still one of the small handful of visual novels that I feel like can only work in the visual novel format. One major thing about Ever 17 that could be hit or miss for some people is its incredibly high amount of slice of life scenes. This is one aspect that while I personally don't have an issue with, many people have pointed out as one of the few issues of Ever 17. There are many moments where the characters aren't in any dramatic moment and are just doing their best to cope with the fact that they're trapped in an underwater theme park by just walking to different places, playing games like Kick the Can with no mystery or plot buildup and stuff like that. I personally like these scenes because I like seeing characters interact with small tinges of character development. But if you prefer mystery stories that focus more on the actual mystery aspects, there are other entries in this video that would probably be a better fit for you. The final issue with Ever 17 is the fact that this is the only visual novel on this list that is not easily available on Steam. Convenience is a huge factor of why Steam is a popular place to get visual novels these days, and unfortunately, Ever 17 was released at a weird time in the early mid-2000s, where you needed a physical copy to exist as a PC game. And unfortunately, both the original Japanese developer as well as the official English translator company are completely closed down now, so physical copies for Ever 17 can go for hundreds of dollars used on eBay. 
I'm normally not one to endorse Yar Haring, but Ever 17 just might be one of the few where it could be okay. But if the last two issues aren't an issue, I personally heavily recommend Ever 17 as a beginner friendly mystery visual novel because of the extremely memorable emotional moments and mind blowing plot twists. And that is it. Five mystery visual novels I consider good for beginners to the genre. What are your thoughts on the mystery visual novels I chose for this video? And what are some opinions on mystery visual novels you've read or you think would be better suited towards beginners? Feel free to leave a comment below.